how about that final season of Attack on Titan, huh? You know, I had some great topical humor prepared about how they're really stretching the definition of season by releasing it in... Three! Three parts over several years! And oh boy, wouldn't that have been funny had I, uh, released this video when I, uh, recorded it three months ago. Oops. But yeah, despite the weird release schedule given to this last batch of episodes, which resulted in a part with no real beginning or end, I thought these were really good. I think that's a fairly common opinion. Yeah, looking through some reviews, and yeah, they seem to agree with me. So, yeah, this part was pretty good. But, I did see one complaint that kept popping up throughout the reviews. It would have to be the CG in this part. And in particular, the Titans. People don't seem to particularly care for this. But you know what? I think the CGI Titans in this season are great. <laughs> CGI started to be cheap enough in the early 2000s that it could be used in a TV production. In animes, it was mainly for mechs, vehicles, and rigid solid stuff like that. This animation, for the record, has almost universally aged like milk. Which I feel has soured anime viewers' opinion on it so much so that even in the modern day when the graphics have improved to acceptable levels and directors have figured out how to utilize it without it looking like complete garbage, it still remains a very contentious topic. And I want to be perfectly clear about this. There is certainly still absolutely terrible CGI in anime to this day that I have zero intention of defending. Crowd scenes are horrifying, and it's just a bad idea to completely switch human characters over to CGI. And of course, even now, solid objects can look floaty and out of place if the director doesn't know what they're doing. But I still think that CGI has its place in modern anime. When used correctly, it can create experiences and artifacts that are simply impossible to recreate with traditional animation. And it can be used to make dynamic and flowing action scenes that just wouldn't be practical to do with 2D animation. Uh, so, you know, I guess, uh, bad CGI in anime is bad, and, uh, good CGI in anime is good. Stick around for more bold hot takes like that! This, of course, takes us on to Attack on Titan and its use of CGI. But full disclosure, I don't really have interest in discussing its broader use of CGI. In general, I think the use of 3D backgrounds where the characters are projected onto turned out remarkably well, and has created some pretty kick-ass action scenes. But I think those also speak for themselves. And yes, the use of random CGI objects in the background can absolutely stand out, but I don't really care. Yes, they are noticeable, but it doesn't really matter. Which is why I'm not going to talk about that stuff. I'm just going to talk about CGI Titans. Starting in Season 2, for budget and time restraint reasons, the decision was made to render the more action-based scenes with the Colossal Titan in CGI. And you know what? Fair enough. The anime industry is notorious for underpaying and overworking its staff. So any decision that is made to reduce the suffering of the animators is definitely the right decision. But I can agree with the decision from like an ethical standpoint, but as a critic, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the Colossal Titan doesn't look like absolute ass. Because he does. Honestly, I feel a little silly lingering on this, like, you've seen the footage. You know how terribly integrated he is. He looks like he's been superimposed over top of the image from a completely different art style. He doesn't look like he's really inhabiting the same space, and even in a freeze frame, he noticeably stands out because the texture on him is noticeably different from everything around him. He looks like he came out of a Telltale game, and the use of CGI just became more prominent in the third season. Then the fourth season was announced. It was to be animated by a new studio, because they were the only ones who would agree to such a tight time schedule. And because of this tight schedule, they decided to make 3D models of all the important titans to show up that season. 
Upon hearing this, fans were reasonably concerned given the show's history with CGI Titans. And now that Part 1 and Part 2 have aired, uh, the reactions are mixed, to say the least. In fairness, the texturing has vastly, vastly improved, making the Titans' textures almost identical to the 2D characters around them. Why, I bet if you were just looking at still frames from these episodes, you wouldn't even be able to tell that they're CGI half the time. But see, that's the catch, because they are moving. And simply put, CGI solid models will always move different than 2D animation, making their motion stand out to everyone. Not to mention the problem with expressions. See, CGI characters are great for action scenes because you can pose them into any position and swing the camera around them no problem, but when it comes to facial expressions, it becomes so much more complicated so fast. And on a TV budget, you just don't have the time or money you need to build complicated rigs that give you nuanced facial expressions. So, on a TV budget, you are always going to have limited expressions when it comes to CGI characters. While the major motions will be covered, there are 68 muscles in the face and neck that work with each other to pull and stretch the skin in subtle nuanced ways to create our different facial expressions far beyond open mouth and open eyes. And yes, this is why even on 3D animated shows, when they need to do more extreme facial expressions, they will sometimes resort to 2D animation simply because it's easier than designing a muscle structure that is that robust. Which leads to shots like this. The Attack Titan's facial features are pushed to their absolute limits here making his expression inhuman and ugly to look at. They have pushed past what kind of expression a human face is supposed to be capable of, making it weird and twisted to look at. Between the inherent weirdness of the 3D animation in a 2D world, and these strange twisted faces on the Titans, it gives their scenes an uncanny feel. So, my tone might have suggested that I think all this is bad? I don't, actually. In fact, I love how the Titans are handled in the fourth season, and I think this shot, this shot here, is perfect. Possibly one of my favorite shots of the entire show. So I have this theory that being knowledgeable about how art is created changes how you watch it and what you enjoy about it. This is not a Boolean function. It is rare to find someone who is completely unfamiliar with the creative process, and it is downright impossible to find someone who is knowledgeable about the creative process for all forms of art. It is very much a sliding scale in which everyone is positioned closer to one side or another based on their own life experiences. I don't think being on one extreme or the other is inherently better but there are benefits to both sides. What I mean by this is that people that don't really have behind the scenes details or who don't know how the sausage is made tend to respond almost entirely on an emotional level. Stories work for them when they feel right, regardless of how nebulous a concept that may be. And when they describe what they like about a movie or a TV show or a book, usually they will go to individual moments that felt cool or were just fun to watch. I believe this to be a quite underrated way of enjoying art, honestly. By being unaware of the tools, limitations, and even the goals of the artist, you can theoretically immerse yourself more in the world they're trying to create. Instead of analyzing the art, one can simply experience it, and I think this is a completely valid way of watching movies. The shortfalling of this perspective, I believe, is that without having a background in the piece of art that the person is consuming can make them unequipped to talk about the material afterwards. It can make it difficult for people to express what exactly they do and don't like about individual pieces of art. Personally speaking, I don't understand music or music theory at all, and I think I might be completely tone deaf, and this means I can't discuss music with other people because I don't even know what I like about music. 
I like the part where it sounds cool, and that really fast section is neat! This also means I have a harder time finding new music that I would like. I know when I'm listening to a song if I like it or not, but I lack any tools required to describe what I like about that music in order to find more music that I would like for the same reasons. I think it should be obvious by the types of videos I make on this channel that I have no problem whatsoever with analyzing art in order to get more from it, but I do think it is possible to take it too far. I think it's worthwhile every once in a while to step back and remember it doesn't matter how skillfully a story is told if you're not emotionally invested in it. But while emotionally shallow storytelling can be overlooked with a fancy presentation, the opposite can also sometimes be true. Sometimes, a quality piece of storytelling can be overlooked due to lackluster filmmaking. I believe that is what has happened with the CGI Titans in Season 4. The anime community knows that they are here as a cost-saving measure, not as an interesting artistic choice in of themselves. Which means they are, at best, a disappointing substitute for the obviously superior 2D animation. I disagree. I don't just think that the 3D Titans look good for CGI. I think that the show and the Titans are better off for using 3D models. I chose my words very carefully when describing CGI Titans from various seasons, and my reason for doing that is because I feel that the Titans of different seasons are different beasts altogether. The CGI Titans of the second and third season look like they're a completely different art style which has been sloppily projected onto the screen. The problem was entirely visual. They did not look like they were part of the same world, unintentionally drawing attention to the artificiality of animation in general by being poorly integrated. But the CGI of the final season is different. It aesthetically matches the world it exists in although it was produced very differently behind the scenes. Despite this, they remain quite noticeable, although people without the knowledge of the animation process would probably have a harder time explaining what makes these titans stand out. And this is because the answer is significantly more esoteric. The titans simply feel off. This largely comes down to movement. Because the CGI is so different from the heavily stylized 2D animation, it has significantly different abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. You can get a similarly off feeling when a traditionally animated film incorporates scenes of intense rotoscoping. These give off similar feelings despite being completely unrelated animation techniques because they are different in the same way. How they move in comparison to the 2D animation is hyper real. Simulating motion through a series of still pictures is an art, an art that is very much tied to the medium being used. If you know anything about the theory behind animation, you've probably heard of the 12 principles of animation. For review, they are squash and squish, anticipation, staging, straight ahead and pose to pose, follow through, overlapping action, slow in and slow out, arc, secondary action, Timing, exaggeration, solid drawing, and appeal. I'm not going to explain all the principles of animation here, but if you're interested, I have linked an article that explains them quite thoroughly in the description. However, just by listening to the titles, you've probably noticed a theme. Well over half of these are about selling the sense of movement through exaggerating the secondary actions to the main movement. Most traditional animation will really push these principles to their limits in order to really sell the illusion of motion. This works fine in 2D because you simply need to push the boundaries more to convince the audience of movement where there is none. But when it comes to rotoscoping or 3D animation, the same challenges do not exist since the object is actually moving. 
The principles of animation still apply to these types of animation, but you don't need to exaggerate nearly as much. And, in fact, you can, in these mediums, easily over-animate. The 3D animation in Attack on Titan is far more naturalistic than the 2D animation, which results in this hyper-real, smooth motion unlike anything else in the show. You may be thinking this sounds like a problem. Surely animation that feels different is bad for the same reason that animation that looks different is bad. But I disagree. Now, if we were trying to create a random background detail, or some character that's part of the universe in a completely mundane way, then yes, it would be a problem if they stood out like this. But these are not mundane, normal parts of the show. These are titans, barely understood, world-changing monsters. If they feel like unnatural, surreal creatures that barely feel as if they belong in this world, then that's a good thing, actually. This hyperreal motion creates an uncanny effect that really adds to the unknowable, mysterious quality of the Titans. But that's not the only reason that the CG is so perfect for this season. I described this shot as ugly, that the animators had stretched the Attack Titans model to its limits to make this strange and inhuman looking monster, and then said it was perfect, and that this is one of my favorite images from the show. Why do I believe these two seemingly mutually exclusive opinions simultaneously? It has to do with where Attack on Titan has ended up narratively speaking this season. Also, I'm going to throw up a spoiler warning at this point. I'm going to be discussing several plot points from the fourth season, so if you haven't caught up with the show, uh, I'd recommend exiting at this point. The framing around Eren's Attack Titan has always reflected how the audience is supposed to see him. When it's first introduced, we can recognize from the beginning that he is different from your standard titan. His design is both less recognizably human than the other titans, with his glowing green eyes, weird teeth, and pointed ears, but also more appealing in form, with a body which is significantly less goofy looking than the other titans. This means, as we learn more about him, he is able to switch from an alarming, unknown threat to a heroic and cruel part of the world. As Eren became more in control of his titan, he stops being shot like a monster and more like a superhero. This is done in part by moving the camera back to focus more on his human body and make his more alien face a smaller part of the screen. This then is taken to its logical extreme at the end of season 3, where he is not only supposed to be heroic, but also the underdog. They do this by having him stand next to bigger, more alien-looking titans, which makes him seem more human and smaller by comparison. Sometimes to an unbelievable degree. But that creates a problem because Season 4 Eren is very different from Season 3 Eren. He is no longer the little underdog just fighting to keep his friends alive. He is, let's be charitable and say, He's going through it. At the start of season 4, he isn't straight up the bad guy. He still has most of the audience sympathy, but from now on, he's going to keep making increasingly morally grey decisions. And a lot of the season's conflicts are about the rest of the cast realizing that he's going down a dark path, but also asking themselves, has he really changed that much from when they called him friend? Which is why I love this ugly shot so much. This is the return of our series lead after a several episode lapse. And here he is to kick the asses of the villains, the people who destroyed his home and killed so many of his friends and family. Surely this is going to be an epic scene. And yet, despite all the intense action, it feels off. The Attack Titan, the superhero of Attack on Titan, who we have seen become more humanized and heroic as the series goes on, feels different. He's the same, but off. This moment, he is defeating a foe, someone who wants to destroy everything we have seen throughout the show, yet it's not epic, it's not cool, 
It's ugly. The CGI Attack Titan is perfect for this moment. So close to what we are used to, yet different. Off and subtly wrong. In all likelihood, the interesting emotional effects of making Eren's Attack Titan more uncanny as he slowly descends into villainy in the final season is just a happy accident. And I can totally understand if this perspective does nothing for you because the Titans still feel awkward. That's fair. With something as subjective as this, you're hardly going to be won over with an argument how you feel is how you feel. But I would like to point out in my defense that this whole idea is not that crazy. The idea of making Eren's Titan more uncanny as he becomes more corrupt of a person is not that out there for Attack on Titan. Let's just say I do not think it's a coincidence that while making the most ethically dubious decision of the entire series, Eren's Titan is the furthest from the human form it has ever been.